Welcome to this online worship service for Bainbridge Community and Solon Community Churches. I'm Pastor Brian Sachs. It's great to have you in worship with us today as we continue our Lenten journey talking about the themes of Jesus' ministry. This Sunday, we'll be talking about the theme of generosity found in the story of Lazarus and the rich man. But as always, we begin our worship service in prayer. This week, our worship leader is Maya Popovic, and she'll be guiding us in our opening prayer. Please join me in prayer. Divine Word, you sent Moses to speak law to the people and bring order to chaos. You sent prophets to speak repentance and bring hope to the hopeless. You sent your son, Jesus, to become your living word, open our ears to hear your word, and our hearts to reflect the light of your truth to others. For the sake of the incarnate word, Jesus Christ, amen. Please join me in the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardships as the pathway to peace, taking as he did the sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that he will make all things right if I surrender to his will and supremely happy with him forever and ever in the next. Amen. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see
Psalm 41, 1 through 3. Blessed is who considers the poor. The Lord delivers him in the day of trouble. The Lord protects him and keeps him alive. He is called blessed in the land. Thou dost not given him up to the will of his enemies. The Lord sustains him on his sick bed. In his illness, thou healest all his infirmities. to seas and farthest horizons Can't even begin to speak of your kindness While I am so far in rebellion Still you gave your life with no question Yes. 
of devotion Our scripture reading for today comes from Luke chapter 16, verses 19 through 31. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores, and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. The time came when the beggar died, and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away, with Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me, and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, because I am in agony in this fire. 
But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. And besides this, between us and you a great chasm has been set in place, so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. He answered, Then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my family, for I have five brothers. Let him warn them, so that they will not come to this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. No, Father Abraham, he said, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. A little girl went to the park with her dad. And you wouldn't believe all the fun that they had. They went on the slide. And they went on the swings. They climbed up the trees and did lots of other fun things. After playing for a while, it was time for a snack. They sat down on a bench, and the girl opened her backpack. She reached inside and said, Oh, looky! It was a great big chocolate chip cookie. She picked up the cookie and broke off a chunk. But then she looked up and saw a cheery chipmunk. Oh, hi, little chipmunk. Are you hungry, too? Well, this little piece can be just for you. The girl broke off another small bite when a bouncy birdie came into her sight. Oh, hi, little bird. Are you hungry, too? Well, this little piece can be just for you. She broke off another piece just like that. But someone was watching her. It was a curious cat. Oh, hi, little cat. Are you hungry, too? Well, this little piece can be just for you. Now the cookie was small and it would be all gone soon. But then the girl noticed a rowdy raccoon. Oh, hi, little raccoon. Are you hungry, too? Well, this last piece can be just for you. After she gave her cookie away, her father didn't quite know what to say. You can share if you want. I don't mind. But wasn't that cookie your favorite kind? It's only a chocolate chip cookie, she replied. I'm not really sad and I'm not going to cry. I do like cookies very much, you see. But I love those around me even more. That matters the most to me. see more videos please subscribe and click the bell This week, we have another parable unique to the Gospel of Luke, the story of the rich man and Lazarus. This story serves as a capstone on the Gospel's teachings on wealth. 
This theme culminates in chapter 16 with a trilogy of teachings, of which this story is the last, so again, this capstone position. The first ends with chapter 16, verse 13. No slave can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and wealth. The actual Greek word used here is mammon. Britannica.com notes, it is sometimes argued that the Aramaic word is derived from a Hebrew contraction of me, meaning from, and haman, meaning accumulation, and connotes wealth or money. Even more interesting, this word is used neutrally in the Hebrew Bible as the equivalent of gain, as in gaining wealth, and is found in the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Talmud. So a word that has a neutral meaning for what was Jesus' scripture, much of the Hebrew Bible, and a contemporary Jewish sect, the Essenes who wrote the Dead Sea Scrolls, and later Rabbinic Judaism that wrote the Talmud, is used by Jesus throughout the Gospel of Luke as an evil master that keeps us from loving and serving God. What's he on about? Let's break down the story and see. Our first character is the rich man. Well, what do we know about him? Obviously, he's rich. How do you get rich? Well, he wears purple. Roman law restricted who could wear purple and how much of it. So if he's wearing that, it means he's connected. He's one of the economic and political elite. His house is gated. Only the wealthiest had walled off houses to keep out the riffraff. His clothes were expensive linen and he feasted sumptuously every day. Luke chooses his words precisely here. The Greek word translated as to feast is used two other times in Luke. In the daydreams of the rich fool, chapter 12, verse 19, and then used in the story of the prodigal son to reflect the joy in heaven at the recovery of the lost. Also, the word translated sumptuously is used to describe the robe the soldiers put on Jesus and the splendor of the angel who appears in Acts 10, the sequel to Luke. This means, in his word choice, Luke is intentionally setting up moral ambiguity to draw the listener in. We're left asking, in effect, is this sumptuous feasting heavenly or not? Is this man rich because of divine favor or ungodly behavior? Our next character is Lazarus a poor man covered in sores. Here the foreshadowing is in his very name. God helps. And it's a good thing God will help him, because nobody else is. The Greek word used to describe Lazarus's longing hunger is actually the word used for the feedings of animals rather than humans. That's how low Lazarus not only feels but sees himself as an animal. And then there's the talk of eating scraps from the rich man's table. It's a reference to the ancient practice of using bread as a napkin, then dropping it on the floor for dogs to eat. In other words, Lazarus is so poor, so hungry, so downtrodden. His only dream, the greatest longing of his heart, is eating a rich man's napkin. When both die, suddenly their fortunes are reversed. Lazarus, who suffered all his life, is now in the bosom of Abraham, the highest level of the afterlife for some forms of Judaism, while the rich man is in torment. Before now, the rich man has ignored Lazarus, but now, in Hades, he finally sees him but the rich man still doesn't understand how he ended up in Hades. Because when he calls out to Abraham, asking for help, he asks for Lazarus to serve him. He still thinks because of his social status, others should be serving him. Luke has Abraham reply by essentially saying, Son, tough nugs. You reap what you sowed in your last life. You ignored Lazarus, you ignored the suffering of others, 
and now you suffer. It's also important to note that in Abraham calling the rich man's son, there's an implicity that being a child of Abraham, being a Jew, is not enough to avoid torment. In other words, we cannot count on our social, religious, or ethnic status as a means of salvation. Being in the in crowd is not enough. To drive home the point, we have a second exchange where the rich man begs for the salvation of his five brothers. Abraham's response is telling. They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. How could the way of Moses and the prophets save the rich man? What can save us? It would be easy to cast him off as saying, he's just an evil guy, he worked with evil Rome, he was corrupt, he was greedy. But it's not, that's not it. In Acts, the sequel to Luke, there's the character Lydia, the purple dyer. If she's dying things purple, she is A, wealthy, and B, making her wealth by selling it to the Roman elite and their collaborators. Yet she is held up as a woman of virtue. Zacchaeus, another character from Luke, who we're going to talk about next week, is a tax collector, a collaborator. Yet Jesus goes to his house and after talking to him, praises him as part of the kingdom of God. So what's the difference? Generosity and repentance. Lydia funds an early Christian community that feeds and helps the poor. That's why she's a woman of virtue. Zacchaeus repents of his sins, then promises to restore what he has cheated people, being generous. The God of Jesus, the God of the prophets, of Moses and Abraham, has one unfailing attribute. He loves people. And most of all, he has a soft spot for those pushed to the margins of society. God doesn't like it when his children suffer because others don't act. God calls on those with the power and the privilege to help to do it, to help those without, to give of what we have to end the suffering of others. Why? Because Jesus declared the kingdom of God is now. We have the ability to make earth as it is in heaven. We don't have to wait for some climactic event. We can do it right now simply by following God's way as revealed in Moses, the prophets, and Jesus. That's why we see, that's what we see in Lydia and Zacchaeus. But the rich man never gets it. He would have gone past Lazarus every time he went in and out of his house. All he had to do is be a little generous with his extravagant wealth and help a pitiful beggar. But he loved mammon. Mammon. The accumulation of wealth. The greed of always wanting more. He was so focused on having more, he couldn't even conceive of giving some away, of helping his fellow human beings. When is more enough? When is more sinful? What Luke is asking us to consider in this parable is the struggle within us between greed and generosity, the hunger for more, and the commandment to give away. In so many ways, we as a society are in the thrall of mammon. Right now, there are 16 million American kids struggling with hunger each year. 16 million little Lazaruses. An estimated 48.8 million Americans, including 6.2 million children, live in households that lack the means to get enough nutritious food on a regular basis. As a result, about one in five children go hungry at some point during the year. 
yet 20% of food insecure families are not eligible for government assistance. Let's balance this out with the fact that there is currently a race among the billionaire class to become the first trillionaire. In fact, Jeff Bezos is currently on track to be the world's first trillionaire in 2026. A trillionaire? That's more wealth than many of the countries around the world. How much wealth does one person need? Especially in the face of so much suffering. We are called to be a generous people. Generous with our time, our talent, and our treasure. Generous not just in the communal life as a church, but in our individual lives as well. In an age such as this, one of the most countercultural and Christian things we can do is be generous. Giving of ourselves so others may live a fuller and better way. We, as followers of Christ, do this in many and diverse ways. In our individual lives, we volunteer for organizations. Many of our members serve on nonprofit boards, civic groups, and pre-pandemic volunteered at organizations. Even during the pandemic, we had members volunteering at food drop-offs. Then there is the work of our two churches, our generosity in the community. We work with outside groups for our fifth Sundays and impact Sundays. How many children have school supplies because of our two churches? Have toothbrushes? How many adults were able to shave before a job interview because of the razors we provided? How many bellies are full because of the food and donations we have donated? The answer to all of this is many. Many lives of people struggling are helped through the work of our churches, and perhaps our greatest contribution is that help is without expectation of thank you or condition. So many programs now come with strings attached. You have to be this poor, or you have to be enrolled in this program. The church provides help without any of these because God calls us to help. God is the one who commands it. So God is the one who provides the thank you. We are merely God's hands. A hand doesn't do its work expecting gratitude or celebration. It does its work because that is what it is meant to do. We are meant to be a generous people. We are to trust in God and share what we have so others might live and have a good life. Jesus tells everyone, wealthy and poor, not to worry about tomorrow, but focus on today and following God's will. And following God and following God's will, tomorrow takes care of itself, because God's way is always the best way for us. Generosity is part of the equation. Jesus teaches us to bring about God's utopic vision. Letting go of our fears and wants for ourselves and living for something more. In doing so, we create a world as God envisioned it, where we live for each other, take care of each other, and love each other as God loves us. In that world, we don't have to worry about how much wealth we have, because our individual needs are met along with everyone else's. And mammon and its hold on our hearts is totally and completely defeated. Amen.
Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you today seeking to be renewed in spirit. Help inspire us to be more generous with those around us, with those in need. Help remind us that the ministry we are doing is touching lives for the better. It is helping people realize they are not stuck in their struggles, but can overcome them with a little help and perseverance. We ask you to be with all who are struggling right now. We ask you to help heal the sick, help empower the oppressed, and help those who are poor or struggling financially to find aid and employment. God, we know you are moving amongst us. We know the kingdom of God is now and we are your hands. Use us to make the world as you see it, to help heal hearts that are broken. Heal our hearts, O oh Lord. As always, we thank you for the blessings that flow from you and from others around us. We thank you for the sunny days, for the good times ahead. We thank you for the good news happening in our world that this great trial of the pandemic is drawing to a close. And we ask you to continue to empower us to have patience for the bright, shiny day where we can all gather again in person and praise you. Above all, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who shows us the way. May the prayer he taught us always live in our hearts, even as we pray it now, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Scripture, scripture reminds us that we brought nothing into the world and take nothing um, out of it. We, we have food and clothing. We are to be content with these. We are told in scriptures to do good, to be rich in good works and to be generous and ready to share. For when we do good deeds, um, our rich in good works and our generous and sharing will store up and up these treasure of good foundation for for the future. We take hold of life that is really life. Life that is really life. What does that look like to you? Perhaps your offering today will help bring this life to, to someone else. What greater gift can we give? Please join me in prayer again. God, our refuge and fortress, our deliverer and protect you. We thank all you for, for hearing our call and, we, and for rescuing us. We thank you for the gift of our salvation. Bless now these gifts that we offer back to you the gifts of resources the gifts of our hearts use these gifts so that others may come to know the life is real is really life amen Judge D.
Each week, we gather in worship to feed our souls, renew our spirits, and empower us to go out in the world and carry the work and ministry of Jesus Christ into our everyday lives. Let's see what is going on this week and in the weeks and months to come. First off, we have our Easter season book group that's meeting this Thursday at 7 p.m. We'll be starting off with the Luke resurrection story. So that begins in Luke chapter 19, verses 28 through chapter 21. Feel free. It's a come as you are kind of thing. All you got to do is uh, we ask you to read those chapters and verses ahead of time. And then we just have a conversation, you know, comparing it between Mark, Matthew, uh, seeing what's in, in Luke that's original, all these different things, seeing what we might not have seen before. So, you know, don't feel you have to have some great depth of knowledge or uh, even have read the others. Just come participate and have a good time. And we are continuing our Lenten journey next Sunday, the 21st, with Justice Sunday. That'll be on Zoom and available on YouTube. We'll be talking about the theme of justice in Jesus's ministry. Following Sunday is Passion Sunday. We'll be having our service and song where we'll be listening to the beautiful singing of Michaela as well as Samantha Lucas. So that will be the 21st, or that will be the 28th, pardon me. Uh, April 1st, we have Mon Maundy Thursday will be available on YouTube. It'll be a contemplative service. Uh, mostly it'll be listening to music, we'll have artwork available. If you'd like to grab an Easter devotional or something like that to read during those times, you can. And it'll be broken up with the reading of the Last Supper from the story of Mark. So that will be April 1st, again, available on YouTube all day long. And then April 4th, we have our Resurrection Sunday, the main event. That'll be 1030 on Zoom and also available on YouTube. Please join in. Uh, we have a wonderful service plan. Some of our youngest members are going to be reading us the story. There will be a brief meditation. It'll be a powerful service. So be sure and join in on April 4th. Grant writing team. March 17th at 7 p.m. is our next meeting. My hours this week, same as usual. Uh, Monday 9 to 5, Tuesday 9 to 5, Wednesday 9 to 5, Thursday 9 to 5, Friday off. Saturday, I'm available. Give me a call. We can set something up. Sunday, see you in worship. Also, wanted to give a heads up that I'm going to be going on vacation i will start Monday, April 5th to Sunday, April 11th. We're asking folks to write letters to active duty military personnel. We're using the program Hugs for Soldiers. That'll be going through March 28th. You can either mail them directly to Hugs for Soldiers or drop them off at the churches. Uh, we'll be putting uh, the details of that in the newsletter. So this is just a kind way that we can help no, this is just a way for us to show support for those who are defending and protecting not just our lives, but also our ability to share our faith and live our values. Solon Community Church vision groups are still happening. We've, we've gone through our first few, but uh, coming up March 21st, 22nd, and 23rd, we still have openings. So if you have not signed up for one of these, please, please, please do so. And you can do that by calling uh, Solon Church, calling my cell, or uh, shooting us an email. Additionally, we had our first womanism workshop. It went really well. That was uh, Saturday the 13th. The 20th, we still have space available. You don't have to uh, feel like if you missed the first one, you don't can't come to the second one. Uh, if you'd like to, please still free, you're still free to sign up. Our solar power info session, that's going to be April 24th at 10 a.m. over Zoom. Uh, check the newsletter. We should have the sign-up info available there. You can sign up through Sign Up Genius or give a call or email, and me or Eva can help you go through that. And last but not least, worship leaders. You've heard some of our youngest members uh, play the role. We got training April 21st to help get folks comfortable with what that will mean in this virtual time and also help get folks comfortable for when we're meeting in person again. Um, you know, the plan is to uh, have worship leaders up there because eventually the plan is to 
have me on a screen at one church and in person at another. So it's really important that we have that active in-person worship leadership going on. Um, you know, nobody wants to go to church and just look at a screen. They want to be there with a person. So please, 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 that will be April 21st at 7 p.m. Look for the sign-up info to be coming out here in the newsletter shortly. And now, people of God, pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight. Take hold of eternal life. To God, who dwells in unapproachable light, and to Jesus Christ, the blessed sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords, and to the Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. This service is over. Now our service of generosity can begin.